Okay, we're going to look at the TI Inspire in AP Calculus and how to use the Inspire to compute the numerical derivative at a point. Uh, that is a required command for the AP exam. There's our school bell. Um, and then I also want to show you how to define a function on your calculator for ease of use. That's not required for the exam. However, if you find yourself needing to use the same function over and over again for several questions, it's easy to define it in the calculator for easy retrieval. Uh, rather than having to manually punch in the equation several times. So let's look at this first question. It's uh, very, very straightforward. Here is a function, find f prime of two. You should be able to differentiate this by hand and then plug in two. However, take advantage of the calculator's abilities and they want you to do this on the AP exam. We will pretend this is a free response question. And all you would have to do is write down f prime of two equals and the answer. You don't have to show any work leading up to it because they expect you to use um, a certain command in the calculator. So I'm going to add a new calculator screen and we will go to calculus, the, the menu option, calculus, and then choose derivative at a point. And when you open that up, it pulls up this window. That's what variable you want to use. I usually just stick with X. For this particular problem, we want to plug in the value of two to the first derivative. And all we have to do now is in this box, enter the equation. And so what this is saying is compute the derivative of this function and that little vertical line means such that x equals 2. And the function was, I need to go back to it, it was a giant square root. So the square root. And for a fraction, I like to hit control divide to open up the top bottom fraction. I'll do trig, the sine of x. Every time you open up sine, cosine, whatever, it will automatically open parentheses for you for their arguments. Uh, and then the denominator is the natural log of x squared plus 1. So control, natural log, again, it automatically does... Uh, parentheses x squared plus one and one thing to look out for is to make sure you're in radian mode so look up next to your battery make sure you see rad instead of deg or something else uh, because that will affect your answer if you have a trig function and something else to point out is if i go ahead and hit enter i get this really ugly version of the answer which it is correct you could write that down and get full credit However, a decimal is really what the readers want to see. And if you look above the enter button, there's a blue approximate symbol. So if you hit control enter, it will then give you the nice clean decimal answer. And so I have that right here. And I want to talk about the rounding expectations for the AP exam. The standard rounding place is the third decimal. So if I were writing my answer on my paper, you have actually two options on this one. You can say F prime of two is negative 0 0.359 and that would be following standard rounding procedures or they would accept what's called the truncated version which means you just write the very first three decimal places up to that thousandths decimal place and you stop they would accept either one of those um, and again you don't have to show any work you don't have to actually write down the derivative just write down the answer they want you to use this command you have plenty of opportunities on the non-calculator version of the exam to show off your differentiation skills. Uh, so let's look at this one, another function, fairly ugly. Find the instantaneous rate of change of g at x equals two. And that big phrase is just a really fancy way of saying find g prime of negative two. So again, I want to use the derivative at a point command. I will plug in negative two. However, this time, uh, let's pretend that this is like the first part of a free response question and parts B, C, and D all refer to the same G of X function. In that case, you're not going to want to plug in or type in that equation every single time. And we're going to take advantage of a define command on your calculator. So back to the inspires. If you hit menu, this is under actions. This is not a calculus command. We want to define and it asks you, what do you want to define? And I'm going to define g of x to be, and I'll just type in g of x equals in the equation, which is x squared, x squared plus the inverse tangent. So open up the trig menu, inverse tangent of x cubed, x cubed, and you have to arrow out of the exponent. And I think it was minus, minus e to the x, and make sure that for your e to the x function, you use the e over here next to the one. Do not use the E from the keyboard. That confuses the calculator. Uh, double check that is in there correctly. 
hit enter and it just says done. And now if I hit G of X in my calculator, the calculator will say, yes, G of X is indeed X squared minus the inverse tangent of X squared minus E to the X. Oh, they flipped it. Why did they do this? Okay, it's the same thing. Inverse tangent is an odd function. And for some reason, the calculator prefers to take advantage of that to alter it. But trust yourself, this is enter entered correctly. They changed the appearance of it right here. So that is G of X. We're not going to worry about uh, any errors there. And I want to compute G prime of negative two. There's our bell again, and we're about to have the pledge. So let me pause this. Okay, and I lost my train of thought. So we defined G of X, uh, and now I need to compute the derivative at a point. So now it's back to menu, calculus, derivative at a point. This time we're plugging in negative two to the first derivative. And double check that, the derivative with respect to X of a function such that X is negative two. This time, all I have to do is say G of X. Okay. Uh, okay. Again, I absolutely mindedly just hit enter. That will give you the ugly answer here. I'm going to hit control enter to force the decimal. Um, and this happens a lot. If you have natural logs in your function, it will pop up this little exclamation point here. It's a little warning. And if you click on it, all it does is ask you to be aware of potential domain issues because um, the function natural log of X only has a domain from zero to infinity of, of positive real numbers. The derivative of natural log X, however, is one over X, which has a domain of everything except zero that includes negatives. And there's a domain discrepancy uh, between the natural log of X and its derivative. And they're just saying, be aware of that. That's not, that does not mean your answer is incorrect. Um, you can trust your calculator. And for this problem, the answer would be negative 3.823. And this time there is no rounding. Um, there is no rounding options as far as truncating versus rounding up. And so back to the problem, I would simply now write that G prime of negative two is negative 3.823 and you are done.